All right, the cat is put away, and uh, I had to restart my computer. Apparently, it was shit in the bed during that last recording. Something about, I guess, <clears throat> I normally render and record these simultaneously. I'm rendering one while I'm recording the next, but it was not up for it. Okay, so Colors of the Wind. Well, this will be nice, maybe. My reading probably will not be. Okay, I want to make a couple of comments real quick. Um, notice that it, there's explicit pedal markings here for this big sweeping arpeggio. This is something you almost never see where there's actually explicit pedal markings, but this is another example where it's almost always implied in accompaniments that I see. I see this all the time, but how terrible would it sound if you're trying to go... Like, no matter what you do, no, even if you had a really smooth, any of that, and you had smooth right hand for, for all of that, what you need is the sustain of those voices. Like, you need to hear that, uh, especially the root note of that chord. So it's always implied, and, and people get, you, you can't get too legalistic about, oh, it's not marked, so you don't play it. Um, style matters, and, and being aware of that, Sometimes the way that they'll write this is like on the first D there, they would write that D as like a half note um, and the eighth note on top of it. So it looks like it's two voices to, to imply a sustain, but it's not necessary. If you're, be a smart musical musician, play it musically, don't play it legalistically and mathematically. Now the other thing I'll say, is, and it, it caught me, Look at how they have accidentally displaced um, the D at the end of the first system. Um, you can actually see in the vocal line, it's in the right place. It's over that final eighth rest, which is in the bass clef. Um, music has to be aligned vertically that way because that's how we read it. So when you're writing music, I mean, th these days it doesn't matter because almost all music software fixes this for you. Um, but it used to be a problem where you know, people wouldn't do that if there wasn't good alignment. It really matters. In older music, you'll see it where the, the vertical alignment's not right. Not only does the vertical alignment have to be right, but the spacing within the bar has to be right. So this is subdivided into eighth notes. Um, <clears throat> so really notice, I mean, I'm pointing. You can't see what I'm pointing at. Notice that on, on that bar with the B, B minor, you have this, that dotted quarter note takes up the space of the amount of eighth notes that would be in it physically. Now granted there are eighth notes in the right hand, or sorry the left hand, that would take up that space anyway. They need to be there. But even if they weren't, um, if the, the bass clef was just a whole note the whole way through, it still needs to take up that amount of space because we actually read the space as much as we read the notes. So I'm going to start back at the, uh, <coughs> at the, the verse there. Interesting choices. Nah. I'm going to ignore the repeat. Oh, I can't really ignore the repeat. I just need it. I'll start on the second ending. Uh, with the pickups. Mm. Man, I'm not... Wow, that's a lot of movement. 
down there. This is a really good example of something that I could play a lot faster, closer to tempo, if I was looking at my hands explicitly between all these things. But if I was doing that, I wouldn't be able to read ahead. And the goal is to practice the skill of sight reading not to make this sound like a song. And so, part of that, a huge part of that is not looking at your hands so that you can practice reading ahead. Ah. So. take a bar out from the second ending. Expecting that. Okay, I'm gonna close this window. It finally started to cool off in here. Um, another thing is that I am having to glance down at my hands a little here and there. And one of the things I've learned to really do is literally just move my eyes as much as possible. I mean, part of it is there are times when I'm not even moving my eyes, I'm relying uh, on a very active proprioception, or not proprioception, uh, per ugh. what's the word I'm looking for? Well, no, my brain, um, peripheral vision, and I'm actually paying attention to my peripheral vision. The better you get at, with with your proprioception and your spatial awareness and, and knowing where the keyboard's at, you're not actually aware of your peripheral vision. There, But in times when I'm really needing to reach for things, sometimes I'll try to keep my eyes on the page, but be aware in the periphery where my hand's at to help me. If that's not enough because the jump is too huge, I'll just shift my eyes, not my head. Because if, if you move your head, now you've got to find the music again. And there are multiple planes happening because your eyes have moved and your neck has moved. So when it moves back, that moves, and then your eyes have to move, and you have trouble finding your spot back on the page. And I found that if you just glance quickly with your eyes, you can kind of dart and all you have to do is sort of correct back to exactly where your eyes came from, <clears throat> and you haven't lost your place on the page. Okay, let's read it again. say about that is that um, the goal is to, to get to where you're not doing that, not looking at all. And if I were working on this to learn it, then I would spend a lot of time, you know, always work in variable tempo or, or in tempo ranges. So I'm not going to always start at whatever tempo I can mostly play it at. I start well under tempo anytime I come back to a thing, uh, not just the tempo I left off in the previous rehearsal. <coughs> and in that point when I'm playing it really slowly, I can really focus on not looking. And by the time I would have per would be performing this as an accompaniment, 
I wouldn't be looking at all, most likely, because I would have kind of trained myself to feel the distances and not need to. And then that has a trickle-down effect to uh, better sight reading in the future, where reading something like this, I wouldn't need to look as much. So, at the verse... explicitly cut off a little earlier than I would want to. I don't know if they're trying to say to cut it right there. A lot of times they put it at the end of the bar, uh, at the end of where the fourth beat would be. I feel like you should just pedal harmonically, which is, is the thing, rather than trying to figure out exactly where they're telling you to cut off. They do in the second, in the B minor bar, they tell you on the end of four, which basically means the whole bar. So, uh, yeah, pedal harmonically. Um, <coughs> second phrase of the verse. so weird the way they're I guess because they'll be singing they're putting little bits of that voicing over the top like a voice above the melody what did I that's actually there we go Since I'm, I'm, this, I'm only going to read through this twice. Finding that A. Let's see if I can find that A. There it is. And so <clears throat> finding that A without looking is largely me trailing. I think what I would do is I would hit this B and I would jump down with my fourth finger. My fourth finger would hit the B flat. I can feel where that's at. And then the A, my pinky would be where the A's at. Not that I can do it very well. Stupid fingerings that 
thinking ahead about this page turn. Okay, last bar of the first ending. Because I'm going to take this repeat. No. All my bandwidth is going to fixing that fingering in the left hand. three bars out. I think I would just look there because you're at the end. You're not trying to read ahead. Uh, for practice, I would probably practice getting that, but uh, in performance at this moment, I would not. <clears throat> okay, that's going to be it. 